Uh, nice to meet you, Bacha. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you so much for, for having us. Uh, mm, well, the mole undercover in North Korea has been truly entertaining to watch, I must say. Ah, it's, thank you. It's fine, it's complex, uh, keeps you on the edge of your seat from minute one. And nowadays, uh, you cannot ask for anything, for anything more, for anything else. How how did you come up with the this idea, this crazy idea? Well, it began, um, you know, very small. Uh, basically, you know, the mole asking if uh, I would be interested in. Um, um, you know, him on my behalf infiltrating the Danish North Korean Friendship Association, which, you know, is a completely harmless group of people. Uh, it's these elderly uh, alcoholized hippies. Um, and it really doesn't make sense to have a mole, an undercover agent inside that group. You know, it's journalistically, that is an overkill, you would say. But I thought, you know, this was costing me nothing. Uh, he was working for free. And I thought maybe, you know, as time goes by, something interesting will happen. Yeah. And, um, and, and apparently, yes, because um, personally, when he went to North Korea and met Alejandro Kautebenas, I, I knew this, that something interesting was bound to happen because I had met Alejandro beforehand and I knew what a uh you know um bizarre character he is yeah you um, have history with him we could say a little bit yeah um, i was i was in north korea uh together with alejandro countabinas with him as my tour guide um wow. the first time i went to north korea and uh he said so many crazy things constantly yeah um, <laughs> While I was watching uh, the documentary, I was thinking in the back of my mind, uh, why must be this guy Spanish? Really? Can we go uh, farther down? Like, I can't believe uh, he exists in, he, he in the democracy, in the democracy we have. Yeah. It's well, for, for me, it is a mystery that the Spanish authorities allow Alejandro Cautabinas to operate as he, as he does. Yeah. Well, because... Of course, he is allowed to defend North Korea. You know, he is allowed to do that in a democracy. Um, of course, you can you, you can find his uh, his uh, opinions uh, to be uh, repulsive and um, and uh, and horrible, but he is allowed to do so. But basically, coordinating coordinating international crime, sanctions yeah. busting, weapons uh, deals. Uh, that is, uh, in my mind, uh, you know, a, a criminal offense, and um, as such, he should be investigated. Yeah, because he's trafficking with intelligence, he's trafficking yeah. with info, arms, uh, drugs, and yes. he says so openly. Well, not so, not so openly, but uh, no, no. he talks. <laughs> he talks about yeah, it yeah. with yes. some people, and yes. he doesn't even uh, even that. Uh, does a background check, a thorough background check of the people he he has around, and well, it's just mind blowing that we get to see what we get to see, uh, thanks to to Ulrich and, and his recordings. Mm. So this must has been truly difficult to to see or to be working on the sidelines lines for you because how have you done it these ten years? Well, it's uh, you know. Basically, we are, you know, harvesting the fruits of a, you know, of a, of a prolonged um, confidence trick. Gradually building up, very carefully building up confidence and trust between the mole and the North Koreans, between the mole and Alejandro Cautabinas, between Alejandro Cautabinas and Mr. James taking it step by step, you know, not pushing the envelope, being very, you know, subtle, very careful, and not, you know, overplaying your cards. Um, and, you know, if you are that patient and, um, and you know, um, and, and, you know, careful, then at certain points, you, you will be given a bonus. 
Um, and uh, and then you know, and then people such as Alejandro Cautabinas, they will really begin trusting you, because after having dealt with the mole for you know five, six, seven years, the last thing uh, on the mind of Alejandro Cautabinas is that the mole is in collusion with uh, a documentary filmmaker from Denmark. Yeah, the, well, the uh, end is just a spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I couldn't believe my eyes when I when I watched that, but it was yeah. amazing. Uh, I have uh, like what I think is the million dollar question. How many times did you think about pulling the plug? Because we can see during the whole mm. documentary that there are tons of moments where things could go really, really wrong. So how do how, how does one endure such difficult events? Yes. How did you do it? Well, it, that that was a a constant, you know. That was top of mind, or, or, or you know, throughout most of this project. What is the end game here? What well, what is the um, the exit strategy? Um, after the meeting in um, in Tarragona, where Alejandro Cautabinos uh, takes his uh, bug detector and uh, sweeps the room yeah. um i thought you know now now we are you know now it's it, it this is simply too dangerous because here the mole is is surviving on a very small margin um it's only because he is cold as ice that that he yeah. you know survives and also because Alejandro does not trust his own equipment because the bug detector is working, you know. Yeah. That I um, think is a Spanish trade, you must say. All the movies goes okay. like that, so you just in reality it seems to be like that that way. Yeah. As well. Okay. <laughs> but so, so, I, so, I couldn't believe that it didn't work properly, so he was safe because of that. No, it, it was working. Yeah, but he thought. But but but, but, he, but he didn't trust it, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but. How can you not trust uh, well, your well, tools? Well, I, I... well the, you know, the mode showed him that it was the car keys, the remote control in his car keys, which is a, an absurd explanation. Um, and, well, uh, and... he is such a um, difficult uh, person to understand. Maybe mm. his personality, his ego uh, plays a big role on all, mm. on all mm. what happened. Because uh, how do you think, uh, how important do you think is his role in Western society, I mean, Alejandro. Very important. I, I will get to that. I'll just answer your other question because after the, the uh, showdown in Tarragona, yeah. I thought, you know, um, we have to call this off. And, and this is maybe even the, the climax of the film. Uh, but then they get invited to Uganda to meet with the North Koreans there. And, you know, and then it becomes even more, um, uh, it spins even more out of control. And then suddenly Alejandro Cautabinos wants to do triangle trade with uh, the Jordanian businessman, Aldasuki, uh, which we also had to follow through with. Um, eventually, you know, when, when I began this project, the very idea of having secret recordings with North Korean arms dealers was you know something I, I couldn't you know i could only fantasize about but at the end of this it became you know almost another day at the office it became trivial looking at footage with north korean arms dealers and when i found myself you know not being as excited as i initially was about that i knew we had reached the end of uh, our journey and uh just before going to Alejandro, but uh, you must have had tons of video, as you said, audio peaks. How did you manage to get to that cut the tension with a butter night atmosphere? Because uh, you oh, wow. that that was a, a, a big challenge because um, you know we had we have to when you edit films, you say you know you have to enter a scene as late as possible and leave the scene as early as possible. Um, but still, you know, the journalists inside me want, want a lot of documentation to be in the film. Uh, another challenge was, you know, how to get the 
Korean language translated. You know, we had to find a person whom we could trust and translating North Korean, uh, mm. Korean is quite difficult actually, because they speak a very distinct dialect, um, which differs a lot from Korean as spoken in South Korea. In South Korea, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, that that uh, that that was a, a challenge. Well, I think uh, one of the keys was animation, uh, the former MI5 intelligence officer and whistleblower he used. For me, she was just the key to everything to understand, to get in pace with with the questions he asked. Because oh, thank you. Yeah, that part really perfect for her from her from her perspective you can see and when you see her working working Ulrich and working mr james and the questions she she asks they are just on point so yes she asks uh, yeah. perfect questions yeah yes. yeah for sure for sure and the way you sit with her you talk to her she asks you questions yes. about yes. the the whole procedure uh, I just love that, and I think without her, it wouldn't be the same. No, I agree. And then she's also she's quite funny. Yeah, she doesn't seem yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. She seems yeah. like like right-minded uh, kind of woman. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, going back a little bit, can you tell uh, the listeners? Uh, what your impressions of Ulrich Larsen and Mr. James were at the beginning and how they went through with time, how they evolution? How they evolved? Yeah, how they evolved, yeah. Well, um, Ulrich um, is a, a, a retired chef, retired because of a of a chronic um, uh, medical condition, mm -hmm. which means that he, he cannot work. Um, um, and um, he, you know, um, resides in the outskirts of Copenhagen together with uh, his family. I think, you know, part of his motivation, and that is me, you know, interpreting him, mm -hmm was he was in need of finding something to do with his life, you know, something purposeful and yeah. meaningful. Uh, and of course, all of us, you know, once you pass the age of 30, you begin to long for adventure of some sort, you know. Yeah, but wow, I don't know yeah. about that adventure, you know. Yes. But um, but going through all of this has really been a of course a life changer for him. You know, um, um, he he is very proud of his ach achievements and and rightly so. Uh, I think his uh, wife clearly has a whole new you know idea about whom her husband is. Yeah, well, that's uh, what Yes, what? and um, <laughs> so you know. Um, no, but he's, he's doing great. I, I was a bit concerned about, you know, having been the mole for, mm -hmm. for so long, I said, yes, yeah. that it would leave a vacuum inside of him, not being the mole anymore. And um, he, he's a public figure now in, in your country. Is he well, recognized? So some people recognize him in the streets, yes. Yeah, because that must be difficult as well. Not just yes. adjusting to a new kind of life, but yes. a new role on society as well it must be yeah. must be hard uh, well uh, and um, and mr james he you know when i met him uh, i met him at a nightclub in copenhagen uh, and he was fresh out of jail when i met him he had been serving a jail sentence of eight years for dealing cocaine and um while being in prison he had seen a documentary I did a while ago called uh, The Ambassador. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was, he was very excited about that film, which is why he approached me in the bar. And then he began telling me about his, uh, you know, merits and um, his, um, his life in general, about how he had been in the French Foreign Legion and then became a, yeah. you know, career, career criminal. 
Um, at that point in time, I was looking for someone who could perform as a investor. Um, and it dawned on me that, that Jim or Mr. James, as he is called in the mold, was the person I am looking for because he is a, you know, danger, uh, you know, junkie. He, he loves uh, being in dangerous situations. And what normal people would consider total out of control is, uh, you know, um, a, a baseline for him. Yeah. So for him, you know, being Mr. James was a sort of, um, you know, he, he lives a life now as a law abiding citizen, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, can be boring if you are a person such as yeah. Mr. James. Oh, yeah. So being, being allowed to perform as Mr. James um, throughout this film was a sort of therapy for him. And uh, now, you know, he is, um, he's very excited about um, the uh, response that he has gotten from uh, the mode. And um, I think it's a matter of uh, time before someone in Hollywood uh, yeah. <laughs> phones and, uh, and ask if he, if he would like to be in a uh, action movie. Yeah, yeah, because he's just phenomenal. If you were to create him from zero to do this role, you could not yeah. get as close to perfection as he on his own does. It's just no, like, I, well. <laughs> it is remarkable. And also I'm very impressed with how good he is at improvising. You know, uh, and also he, that he also makes these very funny remarks. Yeah, he's cold as ice, but then he, you see him on the documentary uh, talking to, to Annie and he, he just remembers things and makes jokes yeah. of it and you can't believe that he was sitting in a room with those north korean guys that have all the power in the world to to kill you and leave no trace at all mm. because that could be <laughs> just mm. Mm. how the how the movie could could have gone so yes. that part was just unbelievable so I, I must say that the whole thing is just difficult to to digest, I, I guess yes. that would be the, because it's not a reality, a, a common thing. Well, you cannot- Well, but, 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 but that was, a, you know, in, initially a, um, because for us, we had, you know, studied the material in detail and dealt with it for, you know, years on end. So for us, it was not as exciting as it, you know, is for people who see this for, for the first time. So we were sort of out of sync or out of touch with how people would uh, experience the film. And um, uh, before releasing it, we, we did submit, you know, rough cuts of the film to uh, some film festivals. Yeah. That was before Corona was closing everything down. And we discovered that that some you know festival programmers thought that everything in the film was fiction. Yeah, because it's hard to believe. Yes, I mean, but also, also, also because the, 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 the gallery of characters is you know beyond this world. Yeah. Um, which is why I you know in the beginning say in order to emphasize it that that every, everything in this film is for real. Yeah, but, um, but I guess it's really uh, complex uh, for us, for us commoners, <laughs> to get to that world because we see that on Hollywood movies, uh, yeah. but our reality is far away from that. And that was what shocked me the most was Alejandro Caudevinos, an Spanish citizen, that does all of those things in the shadows. And mm. he was exposed like that on my computer, on my screen. And I was watching it and I was thinking, this cannot be true because if this were to be true, he would be arrested. But yeah, that was, that was sort of my own expectation when the mold was, uh, it, it had its premiere on uh, BBC and Scandinavian television. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, 
speaking of causality, the first thing which will happen is that someone will arrest Alejandro Cautabinas in Spain. Yeah, yeah well, you, I mean, um, send it to the police. <laughs> Maybe they haven't seen it. Yes. Because yeah. I cannot. Um, and, um, but you know, so far it seems like that Spanish media and Spanish authorities has, they have not really discovered yeah, um, it hasn't the film. Been, it hasn't been released yet here in Spain. Mm. It would be out, I think, on February on the fifth. Yes, I think on the fifth. Thursday, yeah, on the fifth. So hopefully, then it will create it will create a little bit of of movement around here. But I must say that with COVID, everything is just passing by uh, because yeah. the situation is just everything news. Uh, earthquakes we have been having earthquakes here as well in the oh, south and oh. it just passed by yeah. the, the news so but but i think also you know a, a possible explanation is also that in spain as well as elsewhere people perceive alejandro to be a sort of a clownish figure yeah but uh, but he's not for sure. But he is not. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I, I made the same mistake initially. I also thought that he was, you know, a, um, you know, a cook, a, you know, uh, um, um, a person who, who you shouldn't take, you know, seriously. Yeah. Uh, um, it seems to, like to me that he is a puppet, but really he is not. He is more like the master puppet in here because he is truly well connected. Yes, he is. And, he and um, so naturally. And I thought after the meeting in Oslo, where Alejandro is, you know, uh, bragging about if all the things he can uh, deliver and arrange and uh, achieve in North Korea, I thought this is very interesting. But but is it really true? You know, are, are there people in Pyongyang who you know? deals with Alejandro Cautabinas on a on a high level. Yeah. Uh, and I, I really had my doubts about it. I, I thought, you know, when the mole and Mr. James went to Pyongyang, yeah. I thought most likely they are just going on sightseeing. They are not going to meet with people of uh, importance or people of power. Yeah, uh, but, 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 but they did. And uh, yeah. so, so he, re he really, everything he promised. They, they uh, were an true. island. <laughs> I mean, what, yeah. the, what the hell? Uh, just um, buy an island and do a, a facility underground to sell mm -hmm. missiles. It's just mind blowing, as I say it out loud. Uh, but uh, he is untouchable, and there is a, a, a moment uh, on the documentary that he says he is between the boss and the ministers. So just like yes. that, and he uh, says that he works for a ministry which is above all the other ministries. Other ministries, yeah, like. You know, I'm the, the meaning in the middle. You have to pass by me through the gates. He's yes. the guardian of, of the gate, and he is a Western guy. That's what shocks me the most. And he's a Spanish yeah. as well. So, yeah. yeah, it's unbelievable. Me, yeah, for me, yeah. being a Spanish as I am, it's just, I cannot believe my eyes. I, uh, no. I didn't know his figure. I've seen, uh, you have some cuts of Spanish TV shows on mm -hmm. the documentary at the beginning yes. of it. And I didn't know him. No? No, just like that. And I like history. I read a lot. I watch tons of TV. And it was the first time. And mm -hmm. I guess that was, I was so shocked. Yes. And I think there is a lot of people like, like me in Spain. He also, he has a YouTube channel, which is quite popular, I was told. <laughs> I didn't know. There are too many things on YouTube for me to follow up, but I will mm. check it because yeah. one of the things that worked really well uh, was uh, Ulrich going with his camera on mm. all the time. Mm. How do you sell that? It's just, it's the most unbelievable thing of everything we've seen that he's allowed to carry a camera. Well, that is also, you know, another example of uh, how, you know, going for, um, the long haul, um, instead of, you know, of cashing in uh, immediately, you know, just be, be very, very patient. And then, you know, introducing Ulrich as an amateur videographer who, who shoots small amateurish video films for YouTube. 
which he had been doing for quite a while with the Danish North Korean Friendship Association, and then also um, later on with the KFA, uh, the Korean mm -hmm. Friendship Association, and Randos outfit. So they were, you know, used to Ulrich filming, and uh, and even you know, and also the North Koreans were used to him filming. So uh, you know, in the end, you have North Koreans actually holding the camera for Ulrich, you know, yeah. which is yeah. uh, remarkable. Well, uh, another character we could say that was uh, amazing to watch was Mr. Khan. Yes. And a, and a stone face, please. Yes, stone face. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What, um, can you, what can you tell us about him? Have you learned? Well, I, 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 know, I know some things about Stoneface uh, through my sources. Um, I was told that at one point in time, uh, Stoneface was working at the North Korean embassy in uh, Uganda. Yeah. OK. That's and, the uh, connection there. And then also, uh, at one point in time, a British law firm was um, given permission to open up a branch in Pyongyang. Wow. Of course, you could ask what sort of law firm would like yeah. to have a, <laughs> well, I don't a, think. a spin off in Pyongyang, but, uh, but I don't think I should another, ask. That's another discussion. But the North Koreans told them that, OK, we can do this, but we have you have to employ two of our guys inside the office. One of these men uh, was Stoneface which suggests that he is a North Korean intelligence, I think. Yeah. Well, he is like uh, the perfect bad guy from a movie. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And like he, never, he never says anything that, that that's, he's totally, he is a stone face. Yeah, he yeah. never smiles. Uh, there's, there's no response from him at all. I think he is the one that uh, you can see makes them truly nervous, Ulrich and yes. Mr. James because you yes. can sense it and yes. that's a thing that gets to you through the lens his yes. presence and how he deals with the room and how he reads the room you cannot yes. no, you know if, if i was if, if i was in a room with stone face i would begin crying <laughs> i would just uh, go away and run away as far as i could i yeah. guess yeah, yes. that's the, the feeling, I, I guess. He, from, he, must, from he must be the, the perfect guy to bring to a meeting with your bank. Yeah, or maybe he... Stone face <laughs> sitting next to you. Yeah, the worst yes. uh, nightmare for a boyfriend, if you yeah, have a yeah. daughter, yeah, like something yes. like that. Yes, absolutely. And what can you tell us about... Um, what can I, how can I say it, uh, the things you wanted to, to have uh, from this documentary? Because you've, you've talked about how Spanish police didn't act on it. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's going to have uh, more repercussion that has already had? Well, um, I think we will know the full fallout of this film once it reaches Japan, it was sold uh, a, a little while ago to a Japanese television station. Oh, okay. Because Japan is one of the main adversaries of North Korea. Mm -hmm. And then when, once it reaches South Korea and uh, the US, uh, America. Yeah. Because um, I, I think, um, you know, th these three countries are the ones who, you know, have the highest stakes regarding North Korea. Um, we have been in touch with uh, the um, with the expert group of uh, the United Nations who are monitoring the uh, sanctions against North Korea and made sure that they were given access to screening the film. Uh, I think they will deal with the film in their next report. Um, and, um, you know, um, so far, you know, I'm, I'm happy about that, you know, experts in North Korea and the armaments industry are impressed with our achievements and uh, have, uh, you know, um, um, have, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the documentation in the film is, uh, you know, high quality and, and, and genuine. And, and, and th that is important that, that people understand this. Um, yeah, because nothing was made up. All you have no. are true documents 
So yes. I guess the the United the ONU should use it some organization for I know humanitarian reasons. Maybe they could use it for for legal purposes. Yes, you know, but no, but basically we are uh, infiltrating and unraveling a criminal network which uh, connects Pyongyang with uh, um, their uh, uh, co cooperators and helpers uh, abroad in Spain, in uh, Jordan and elsewhere. People who are, you know, facilitating and helping North Korea with avoiding and busting sanctions against North Korea. And um, I, I think, you know, that this film is important uh, regarding, you know, um, preventing North Korea from proliferating uh, and spreading their uh, weapons technology. Yeah, because we see how they work. They show you the ropes of the trade, to say so. Uh, they talk about international waters, about trading and the trafficking and the things they do to get to, to the point and to get yes. uh, things through. So maybe this will help uh, to put a stop or at least to slow down their business a little yes. bit. So maybe. No, no but what, what, what is in the news today is that um, the Americans are um, uh, allocating $4 million to um, prevent and, um, and curb uh, North, the North Korean um, weapons industry from uh, from selling weapons, mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, um, um, and, and that is important because what is so what is so you know mesmerizing and um, and you know also scary about this film is that the North Koreans are perfectly willing to sell high end and you know very advanced. Uh, weapons to a private person. Yeah, if uh, you have the money. Yes, yeah. you know. Yeah. And you, so you have to ask yourself, what happens when the real Mr. James comes, comes to Pyongyang? Through. Yeah, comes through. Uh, and we we are not asking for uh, nuclear weapons or uh, biological or chemical weapons, but that, of course, is. Uh, you know, a, a possibility in the, in the future that someone will will try to buy such weapons from the North Koreans. Yeah, but seeing what was on the menu, <laughs> to, to say it like that, uh, it can happen just as well. So yes, no, but but we were, you know, our, our, our rules of of engagement was that we did never give the North Koreans any money. Yeah, that was that was very. And they important. signed it anyway. Yes. Yes, but we, so, we, we didn't give them any money and they were paying for themselves all the time. We were not paying for their air flights or hotels or anything. That was rule number one. And then rule number two was that that we only did what they proposed. So we were very careful with not, you know, provoking or encouraging them to do, um, you know, criminal activities. So, you know, so because they did not propose selling nuclear technology to us, we did not ask for it. Mm -hmm. They did not propose if we were selling chemical or biological weapons to us, and, and so we did not ask for it. But I'm sure, you know, or I, I strongly suspect that if Mr. James had asked for uh, buying uh, ke chemical weapons, that would have been uh, perfectly possible. Yeah, uh, they wouldn't mind. Uh, kicking out that whole people on the island just to to build a resort. So I guess when well, you don't but, care but about that, but, human but, lives. No, but that was actually the Africans. Yeah, uh, but I mean, it's the whole planet. It's not yes, just yes. And the North Koreans. It's yes. just uh, because Uganda people as well. Then you have the Jordans and you have North Korea and you have the Spanish guy. And you mean it's everywhere. It's like yes. a net. Uh, a well constructed net, and it's terrifying. Yes. What you saw, uh, what you can see in this documentary is just yeah, terrifying. Yeah. Totally incomprehensible. Yeah, it's, it's very depressing with the real estate guy who, uh, yeah. who tells the people on the island that uh, Mr. James is there to build a hospital. Like that. Yes. And they yeah. play with the kids as well. So that was 
just not human. Uh, for me, no, some no, people no. On, on Earth, just not human, not human enough, no, that's for sure. No. Well, uh, can we ask you about a uh, next project or do you have something in mind? It's going to be Korea again, <laughs> your next project? Or uh, you... My next project? Yeah, if, if I can well, ask uh... you. Well, um, I am developing uh, two, two new movies, but um, I, you know, this is not because I want to be pretentious or secretive, but I'm very careful with not uh, discussing uh, things which I am working on. Working because, on, okay, okay. Because then in the end, you know, I become bored with them because I speak about them all the time and then I don't <laughs> feel like doing them. Okay, so we'll wait and we'll call you again. No problem. That, that is a deal. <laughs> No problem at all. So, well, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a really candid talk and it truly has been a pleasure. Well, uh, likewise, I really enjoyed uh, this talk. I hope it does really well and get recognized as it deserves. Thank, thank you, so, you much. so much. Thank you so much. Good, good luck with everything. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.